Thank you very much uh, for having me. Um, yeah, I, I was supposed to join you uh, from Israel um, when, when we booked the session, but um, at the end of the day, we noticed that it's uh, super important to come here to college campuses and to communities abroad. And we kind of uh, built this emergency delegation at Diploact, the organization that I work with, in order to bring some of the voices and to put um, names uh, behind those numbers that we keep on seeing, uh, especially of those who died at the Re'im festival uh, of the Nova party. And um, in the last, you know, since October 7th, uh, we've been doing a lot in order to make sure that these voices will go out and spread outside of Israel, um, especially in the Arabic language. I've been part of, uh, um, you know, at Diploac, we created this Arabic group of uh, non-Jewish uh, Israeli citizens that are part of them, Muslims, Christians, Druze, and Bedouins. Some of them did national service. Some of them uh, did military service. Some of them are today, right now, at this moment, actually on the border with Gaza or the border with Lebanon and fighting alongside with their uh, fellow IDF soldiers. Um, to mainly speak about what's going on in Israel, but in Arabic, because we believe that the Arab world needs to know more about what's going on and needs to hear it uh, from actual Israelis, not just, uh, um, you know, uh, in English, not just from foreign media or the mainstream regular Arabic media. Um, and this is we're able to do by uh, connecting through social media, publishing our videos on social media and just carry the message outside, um, outside there. As Saul mentioned, I, I come from uh, the South Lebanon Army community that fled to Israel in May 2000. And uh, one of our, uh, our connections, you can say, to the state of Israel is because our families, uh, not only you know, those who are in, were at the South Lebanon Army, but also Christians in Lebanon, have suffered a lot from terrorism coming from the PLO, later on from the Hezbollah terrorist organization. Um, I remember a few days after uh, uh, the attack of October 7th happened, my mom was speaking with her friend on the phone and she told her what happened in the south of Israel is the same thing that happened to us in Lebanon, where um, the terrorists of PLO entered their villages and uh, killed and butchered um, hundreds and, and, and uh, um, thousands of Lebanese Christians just because we didn't believe in their way and didn't support their way of terrorism. And this is something that for us, especially for me as an Israeli Christian today, is super important, not just to speak about Israel in Arabic and to show the Israeli side, but also to show my support to the Jewish community abroad and to the Jewish community in Israel, that we are here for you. We're here to carry your message and we're here to make sure that you've been heard and that you've been listened to. And um, to kind of, um, wider that bridge that we have, uh, because we need today to kind of collect all together. Um, you know, it goes even way deeper than just, you know, being on Israel's side or being a Zionist or being uh, um, uh, anti-Hamas or anti-terrorism. Uh, it just, you, you don't need to be a Zionist in order to go against what Hamas did. You don't need to be pro-Israeli in order to go against what Hamas did. You don't need to be, you know, uh, um, uh, an Israeli to go against what Hamas did. You just need to be a human. And this is something that we're trying now to spread on uh, and, and speak with. Um, we did this emergency delegation. Uh, we took it off less than a week uh, for eight events here in the States. Uh, we started in uh, Boston, continued to uh, Philadelphia, then New Jersey, and today we're in New York. Uh, we're having actually in about a few hours at 4 p.m. in New York uh, at NYU. Um, so if you have friends um, and if you have anyone that you know here at, in New York, tell them to come to the NYU event. Uh, because what, what we bring today, it's not just regular Israeli stories or regular stories about Israel and who's right and who's wrong. Um, I'm here accompanied with uh, another three fellow uh, delegates uh, that speak about their friends that were killed at the Nova Festival. 
and they want to carry on their message. They want to uh, commemorate their memory. And I think it's also important for us because I know that the majority of us since day one uh, didn't even take the time or, or a second to mourn what happened and to kind of realize, um, um, you know, the events uh, because we immediately started fighting and immediately started uh, spreading out uh, the videos and comments and, and sharing to the world what we know about and what they should go against. Um, so in, in kind of these events right now, we're trying to bring back the humanity um, and the names behind the numbers and uh, to kind of give also the Jewish community here and the students kind of a different perspective to look at and to, to kind of embrace it, to take this hour um, uh, and to feel more able to express your feelings and yourself and, um, and to kind of go, go deep inside the story uh, because I, I believe it goes beyond just Israel and uh, just who's right or wrong. It's, it's, it's us being humans. And um, I think uh, what led me to this day is, is mainly because of my family's heritage of this connection to the uh, Jewish people and to Israel um, out of this bonding of being minorities in the Middle East. And as minorities, we need to support each other and we need to protect each other. And when my father joined the South Lebanon army in 1982, that was uh, a military uh, that fought alongside with the IDF nonstop from day one, um, because they believed in a better in a better future. They believed and they wanted us to have a peaceful and thriving two uh, separate countries, Lebanon and Israel, but they wanted them to thrive together. And we always knew that Israel uh, is an ally, that Israel is, is on the humanitarian side, that Israel will do everything in its power to protect its citizens and to make sure that other citizens in other countries um, will stay safe. Uh, like we're seeing today in, in the Gaza Strip, where Israel is demanding all people that are not relevant to Hamas to evacuate from the northern of Gaza. We've seen it all along. We've seen it with um, uh, unheritable uh, military tactics that, you know, the, the knock on the roof. Israel invented it because it wants to make sure that uh, regular civilians will not be injured. So we knew it back then in the 70s that this is what Israel does. And uh, this is now kind of us carrying the message outside, um, making sure that our experience and the Jewish community and the Israeli experience uh, will carry on and kind of be a warning to the world that it will not stop um, till Hamas is, is eliminated. And this is something that is super crucial to let the world know uh, in all languages. So. This is kind of what the message that we're carrying out. And this is kind of, I made it my mission also to speak about, uh, uh, about my, me being an Israeli um, because uh, there's a lot of misconception. Uh, there, we've been through dehumanization, we've been through uh, uh, delegitimization and um, only by sharing these personal stories we're able to kind of bring back people to our side and let them see us as who we are. Uh, yeah, I think this is kind of, uh, <laughs> I think this is kind of a briefing, a short briefing of, of everything that I believe in and, and what I've been doing the last 10 years. And just the last uh, note, I think uh, in 2017, I created the Minorities Project as part of Diplo Act. Uh, that was built from uh, Muslims, Christians, Jews, and Bedouins inside of Israel. So everyone you see today alongside of, of the international uh, community speaking from Israel, we're part of the Diplomat uh, movement because well, we believe that um, minorities need to be in the front line of public diplomacy regarding to Israel. We're 25% of the Israeli population. We see a lot of initiatives uh, of Arabs in Israel today that not only uh, like we are doing, going outside and speaking with our full names, full faces, 
um, you know, being even, uh, um, th there's a lot of threats against us uh, and a lot of mean things that are, are being written against us uh, on social media and everywhere and news outlets uh, also around the world. Um, my face was just in Gaza now a few days ago. Um, someone, they, they just announced, uh, they wanted to do this uh, reveal of who's this man that is speaking about Israel, but I'm like, I've been speaking in my own name and my own identity. I've never hidden anything of, of who I am. So that was kind of funny, uh, but it just shows how much they are actually afraid of what's going on because suddenly there's a lot of Arabic voices going against Hamas and what they did. And this is something that they didn't expect. And this is something that we're making sure to make louder, to make clearer. And uh, we will continue doing that. We will continue supporting our state and continue supporting our uh, fellow citizens and the Jewish community abroad. So thanks, Jonathan. And uh, first, I, I, there is a question that came in that I want to ask. Uh, but first, where is the the what the NYU event? Where is it being held, and and the time is it 4 p.m. You said? Yes, it's it's 4 p.m. at the Hillel House at NYU. Oh, Hillel House. Okay, great. Yeah. And yeah, then, on on my story on Instagram, there's a link for to to register. Um, so so you can do that. Okay, so um, we'll we'll look for that. Uh, also, and on my Twitter also. Okay, great. Um, so the question that came in is JNF USA works very hard to elevate positive Israel voices on campus and making sure students feel confident and proud to be Jewish and Zionist. You've spoken a great deal at college campuses. In your experience, what has made the biggest impact in opening the eyes of students on Israel? I think being non-Jewish and speaking in favor of Israel, that was something that kind of took the rug from beneath a lot of the anti-Israeli students out there, especially because they didn't know how to kind of uh, 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 embrace what we said. Uh, I've tried throughout the years to speak even in Arabic with some of the anti-Israeli students on campus. And I'm, I'm, I'm deliberately saying anti-Israelis because they're not pro-Palestinians. With pro-Palestinians, we have kind of a shared ground that we can speak about with human rights and what goes along with it. But we're talking here about students that doesn't believe in the right of the Jewish state to exist. And this is something that we will not agree on. And suddenly to see a non-Jewish person speaks about Israel in that way and speaks about their experience in living in Israel, it kind of makes them um, kind of everything they believe in, because they always hear apartheid. And what does apartheid mean? It means that a minority is controlling a majority and we don't have equal rights. And suddenly when we speak about it as full Israeli citizens, and we are the minority, not the Jewish community, the, the, the Christians and the Muslim, we are the minority in Israel. So this is kind of uh, uh, get, puts them in this conflict that, wait a minute, what, what did I knew till now? Uh, not a lot of them will agree uh, to be honest with them saying, okay, maybe you changed my mind. But we have seen a lot of success throughout the years where suddenly because we, we spoke to them in a different level, in a different way, it kind of made them question. And this is something that is super important. We don't have to bring them on our side, but it's important to make them question what they believed in till now. And in that manner, we were we had huge successful uh, um, events. And, um, you know, if you can't beat them, confuse them. This is kind of our, our way to do that uh, because it, it will make them question and go on and search for more answers. And once they will search for more answers, they will find out that it's more complicated than, than what they're presenting or expecting it to be. For example, one example is the 75 years of occupation on Gaza. This is something that in my mind, even like even the, the, the least person that knows a little bit of history knows that Gaza wasn't even part of the picture till 1967 because it was under an Egyptian control till then. So, so th this kind of takes the 75 years out of it in a second. So once that happens, it will make them question that suddenly in 1993, Israel evacuated the majority of the Gaza Strip. And then in 2005, Israel evacuated 100% of the Gaza Strip. 
2006, Hamas was elected. 2007, Hamas did, did everything in their power to stay in power and eliminate every opposition possible. So these kind of things that we're trying to kind of even, you know, speak about, uh, because it stopped being Israel against the Palestinians. It's now Hamas against the Israelis, and it's important to to put that emphasis uh, that Hamas is a terrorist organization that is controlling the Gaza Strip, and they're abusing their own uh, citizens of Gaza. And one last quick question. Uh, one of the viewers wanted to know if your message is being broadcasted to the Arabic community. Oh yeah, we, we share videos in Arabic ourselves, every one of our group that you know has, uh, has their own uh, uh, Instagram and Facebook and we share it everywhere on TikTok. And, um, and, and we do that. Uh, one of my videos got more than 250,000 uh, views in only one day. And you know that you achieve the right target once you have 4,000 comments and about 400 likes. Um, so, so we know that our message is being uh, uh, is getting to the audience that we wanted to actually get. We don't do our videos in Hebrew. We don't do our videos with Hebrew subtitles because at the end of the day, Israel Israelis are not our target. Our target is the Arabic broader audience. And we know that it gets there because we suddenly see our faces in the in the Arabic media, uh, like we got to the Gaza now, uh, 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 two million followers, um, because we we delivered the message immediately to them without even you know having someone to connect us. Uh, this is the huge success of the social media, and I think this is super important uh, because at the end of the day, only one person needs to share it with another person, and then we'll go wider and, and, and broader and, uh, and and we've we've been doing it and we'll continue to do it also in the future